Good morning. Hello from beautiful Silva, North Carolina. Uh, my name is Mary Brown, and I get to be the pastor here at Silva First United Methodist Church. And as um, you know, this whole COVID experience continues to take us for a ride. It's just interesting to watch the kind of ebbs and flows here. And so um, for a little while, I feel like there were maybe even more people in the sanctuary than there were online, and, um, and things were, uh, that was kind of cool. And now, COVID. And uh, so a lot of you are out there on Facebook or YouTube, and we're, we're grateful that we are, that you are. There are a lot of you that need to stay home right now and to be safe and cautious and worship from home. But it's really cool, this is one of the good things of all this, is even though there's fewer faces that I get to look at here, 
I know there's a lot of faces who are out there, and we're grateful for you being with us, grateful for the gift of the Holy Spirit that allows us to feel together even when we're not physically together. So if you are out there, if you're online, um, check in. Uh, leave something in the comments to say, like, hello from wherever you are. It's good to know who's out there on the other side of the camera with us. Also, I hope that everyone at some point today will go to our website, silvafumc.org, and use the attendance pad there. Um, whether you go direct to the worship page or the main page itself, you'll see a but button for the attendance pad. If you're a regular attender, all you need to do is leave your name, but that's a great way to update your contact information, um, give us your birthday if it's come and gone and we didn't recognize it, request a name tag like mine, and you can also use that attendance pad to submit a prayer request that will go to our office staff first. We won't share it out loud here in worship, um, but we will keep that confidential if you want us to, or we can pass it on to our prayer team. Now, otherwise, know that um, uh, Jessica Green, our uh, director of children's ministries, is monitoring the live stream today and so keeping track of um, what prayer requests that you might put in the comments. So please feel free, whether you're in person or online, uh, let us know what your prayer requests are. Anything that's put in the comments, we'll name out loud during worship later today or do our best to keep up with it and name it out loud later today. Also on our website, you'll find that give button. Um, and so as you work to keep up with your spiritual discipline of giving tithes and offerings, you can go to our website uh, and make use of that. And if you're here in the sanctuary, we do have an offering plate in the back that you can use as well. So each week, those are kind of like our practical preparations, like our business for getting ourselves in order and getting ready for worship. But there's also spiritual preparations that we make. And um, to me, this is, this is the real important stuff. So one of the ways that we spiritually prepare ourselves for worship, start to focus ourselves in here, is to bring in the light of Christ, uh, representing the Holy Spirit present with us. So we've got Eleanor and Isabel who are going to do that for us today. If you're at home and you have a candle nearby, you can light a candle of your own. And as we do this, we think of the flame at Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit first arrived and there were those flame, tongues of flame with the disciples. And so in the same way, these lit candles remind us that the Holy Spirit is present with us all the time, but especially we want to remember this as we're in worship together. Thank you, girls. Great job. So we also have an open Bible here in worship. It's on our piano uh, back behind De Diana. Um, practically speaking, you can open yours if you have it with you. Um, open it up to Galatians chapter 6, and you can be ready to follow along with our scripture for today. But when you do that, that also is another physical reminder that we are attending ourselves to the word of God together in worship. And so um, we want to open ourselves and focus ourselves on that. And finally, as we really get ready for this hour of worship together, we might take a deep breath. Whatever your week has been full of, maybe there are some things you need to let go or kind of empty your mind of, take that deep breath and really work to turn yourselves toward God this morning. And that's what we're doing together in worship. We are focusing ourselves together on Jesus Christ. And a great way to bring that to a point is by praising God. So let's do it together. God is good all the time, and all the time, God is good. Good morning. Those are very appropriate songs for everything that has been going on and for the message this morning. Jessica is in charge of the prayer list, and she is gathering those names online. I have not received a text from her at this point for them, so we are going to take a moment to pray for all of the people that have sent in specific prayer requests, people that have been on our prayer requests for most of the summer. So if you will bow your head, we will have one minute of prayers for those people. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you in prayer this morning to lift up individuals, families, and communities, along with the people in our church that have sent in prayer requests. 
We're praying for our neighborhood, neighboring communities and the result of last week's weather. We're grateful for the examples you have given us in helping those in deep need. The needs of the communities are great, and many of your children have answered the call and given what they could. The response was so great that they have asked for the supplies to be halted temporarily until the ones that have been given are given out. When that is done, they will need more, and more will be collected because your children are answering your call. Not only materials, but calls, visits, anything that they can do. Let us continue to show our love for you by doing what is needed for our brothers and sisters. Lord, we are so grateful for the many blessings that you have bestowed on us. Grant that we will always share these blessings with others. In your name we pray, amen. Our scripture reading this morning is from the book of Galatians, chapter 6, verses 1 through 5. Brethren, even if anyone is caught in any trespass, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness. Each one look into yourself, so that you too will not be tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and thereby fulfill the law of Christ. For if anyone thinks he is something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. But each one must examine his own work, and then he will have reason for boasting in regard to himself alone, and not in regard to another. For each one will bear his own load. This is the word of God for the people of God. at this time. No, we don't pass the plate anymore. We do have a plate in the back. You can also give online. You can send a check in the mail any way that you choose. And our church has been extremely wonderful this year. We've paid off the debt and we have continued to bring in plenty of money to take care of everything, including a new position. We have Gracie who's sitting back there with our youth. We have several other things that are going on. It's wonderful for this church. We have the Heights program <coughs> along with that. So if you will please bow your head. We offer the offering. Lord, thank you for everything that you have given us, and please take what we are giving back to you and use it in the best way that it needs to be used. In your name we pray. Amen. Hey guys, it's Miss Jessica here with this week's children's message, and I have some guests. As you know, we sent a few youth this summer on Wilderness Trail, and the Wilderness Trail theme verse just happens to be our scripture reading today. So I asked these guys to come and talk to our kids a little bit about what it's like to carry each other's burdens in Christian community. So guys. You were talking about how y'all would talk about burdens in the theme verse each night at campfire, right? Yes. Can you tell our friends a little bit about that? Yeah, well, like, each night we would each have to say, like, one or two things about something we wanted to leave behind from the day or your past or something. And it was just kind of like something that to take the load off of the day and just do something to kind of just have fun around the campfire and that kind of stuff. Do you think it created a bond or a sense of Christian community? Like you were doing it in community with other Christians? Yes. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. 
Awesome. That's awesome. And so whenever you look at the image, so it's people in a line, did they talk to you at all about that? Like, what do you take from the image of Wilderness Trail? Probably, like, not all the times were we walking together, mm -hmm. but, I mean, there was very few times where you walked alone. It was, normally you'd at least have one other person with you. Yes, that's perfect. And that's what I want all of you guys to remember, is that when we are in Christian community and together, we don't walk alone. Jesus, the Holy Spirit, and God's grace goes with us always. So I want to thank Atticus and Connor and Sawyer for being with me today and answering some of my wilderness trail questions. And I can't wait to see all of you soon. Thanks. So uh, this was kind of a, a big week in the Brown household uh, because we had a, a big transition happen. Um, a big week, not just for me, but for me too. I became the parent of a middle schooler. Um, yeah, and I've asked that middle schooler if she would come up and, and, uh, and help me talk about this. You bring your backpack too? Because I really like your backpack that you picked out for the school year. So, um, so Eleanor is uh, now a sixth grader, which is crazy to me that um, I'm old enough to have a, a sixth grader as a child. Um, here in Jackson County, if y'all live here, you know, we actually don't have separate middle schools. All our schools are K-8. So Eleanor didn't physically go to a different school. Um, but, but there are some differences, right? What's different about being in sixth grade? You change classes a lot. <laughs> you change classes a lot? No yeah. locker yet. Now. Um, but you get to eat lunch in the cafeteria? Yeah. Is that right? Which is probably a big change from last year. <laughs> and you get to, you can try out for middle school sports if you want yeah. to. Um, is there anything else that's different about being in sixth grade? There are different people. Different, different people. A lot of people transfer, transferred to Fairview. So new people in your classes? Yeah. So that's awesome. Thanks, Eleanor. You're welcome. Can I keep your backpack? Because I think it's sweet. So I, I mean, part of what makes this so real is that I can remember so well being a middle school student. Um, elementary school, maybe not as well, but like middle school, I vividly remember that. And I remember it as a season of figuring out who I am. Not to imply that I've got it all figured out. It's amazing to me that at 43, I'm still kind of working on that. But, um, but especially in those middle school years, like figuring out, like as I grow and, and gained a little more independence from my family, then, then who, who am I really? And that meant for me asking a lot of questions about my faith, uh, questions about the, the faith that I had been brought up in, and eventually coming to claim that I was a Christian maybe even ahead of anything else that, that I was and that I am, I am a Christian. And as a middle schooler, saying that it's not just because mom and dad make me go to church every Sunday, like I, I'm claiming this for myself. This is a big part of who I am. Now, I'm kind of a, a, a task-oriented person by nature, um, and uh, so I tend to approach things uh, with a little bit of like gusto, like I wanna, let's get this done. Tell me what needs to be done and I'll do it. Uh, and so with schoolwork, I remember I always uh, looked forward to getting the syllabus. Um, Eleanor and all the students at Fairview, they get this cool planner, and every day we parents are supposed to sign it if we don't forget, and uh, it says like exactly what they're supposed to do for each day. Like as a student, I loved that. Tell me what needs to be done. I wanna make the grade, and uh, if you tell me what work has to be accomplished in order to make the grade, I will do it. So as I started to claim being a Christian, it was a very similar mindset for me. Okay, I wanna make the grade for Jesus. So what, what work needs to be done? What am I supposed to be doing that's gonna set me on the right path so that one day I can say, I am for real a Christian? Is it going to church every Sunday? Going to youth group every Sunday night? Is it reading my Bible every day? If I do that, then am I a Christian? If I listen to only Christian music, 
Am I a Christian then? If I get up early to go pray by the flagpole, am I a Christian? If I tithe 10% of my babysitting money, am I a Christian then? Like what, what is gonna get me the passing grade with Jesus? Now this is actually put, put in a very different way. The kind of question that's behind the book of the Bible we call Galatians. We call it Galatians because it was written by the Apostle Paul to some churches in a region called Galatia. And he's writing to them to try to answer the question, what makes a Christian a Christian? See, it seems that in these churches that Paul started, some other Christians have come while he's been gone and gotten them confused on this point. Now, Paul, you have to remember, um, before he was Paul, he was Saul, like same guy, different name. And Saul was um, a committed Jew, a kind of Jew called a Pharisee, like a letter of the law kind of guy. If there was a rule, Paul was following it, or Saul, excuse me. He was so legalistic and rigid in his faith. And he, he did it out of an effort to do the right things. Like, I think Saul was very much a task-oriented kind of guy. Like, he wanted to do all the things to be a real Jew. But then this, this Jesus guy came along, and he was doing things differently. Like, he was developing the law in a way that Saul didn't think was right. And so for a long while, in an effort to do the right thing, Saul ended up doing the really wrong thing. He persecuted those who followed Jesus like crazy, even having some of them killed. So because of this, Saul, who became Paul, he knew the danger of getting mixed up on what the real work was. He knew how dangerous it could be if you're not clear on what really makes you faithful to God. Now, eventually, Saul has like a literal come to Jesus moment. He's on the road to Damascus. He gets struck blind. It's high drama. And at the end of it, it's such a big life change that he changes his name, becomes Paul, and starts spreading the Christian message all over the Roman world to places like Galatia. So that brings us back around to today's scripture. I think it helps to know all that because given his background, Paul knows that what's happening in Galatia while he's been gone can get these Christians really sidetracked. If they start to think that the wrong things are most important, if they get mixed up on what really makes a Christian a Christian, then they might go down some path like he did where they end up doing the wrong thing with good intentions. So he writes to them and tells them, look, these other Christians have showed up and they're telling you that in order to be a Christian, a for real Christian, you need to observe all the Jewish law And in order to be a Christian, a for real Christian, you need to observe all the Jewish festivals. And in order to be a Christian, a real Christian, you're going to have to get circumcised. Now, if you don't know what that is, I'm not going to explain it to you, but I've always felt like this would be a real discouraging point in sharing the gospel with others. (laughs) Like, who's going to sign up for that? Now, all these things in and of themselves are not bad things. Obeying the Ten Commandments, that's a good thing. The Jewish festivals, that's good. And even today, many of us still observe the tradition of circumcision. We have our own infant sons um, circumcised as babies. These aren't bad things in and of themselves, but what's bad is when we start to think those things are what make us really a Christian that those things are the work we have to do to make the grade with God. And they're not. What makes the good news such good news is that 
Jesus has already done the work for us. The work that needs to be done was Jesus dying on the cross and rising again from the dead. And it's already happened. We're in. We've got a passing grade. It's kind of like if you show up on the first day of class and uh, the teacher hands out a syllabus and um, you look over the syllabus and oh my gosh. This is going to be like the hardest class ever. There's hours of homework every night, written assignments every two weeks. At the end, there's a four-hour final. There's no way you're ever going to be able to do all the work to pass this class. And just when you're in a complete state of overwhelm, the teacher says, but actually, guess what? Someone volunteered to do all the work for you, for all of you. So all the assignments have already been turned in, the test has already been taken, you've already passed. That's kind of what God has done for us in Jesus Christ. Like we've already got this passing grade. We were never gonna be able to do all the work anyway. It would have been impossible for us. And so God has done it for us through Jesus. But there's still something we should be doing, right? And I think as a middle school student, when I was wrestling with this, getting that feeling in my gut, like I'm doing a lot of things, am I a Christian now? I I think part of that feeling was the Holy Spirit telling me, nudging me, that yeah, there is something we're supposed to be doing as Christians. We're, We're just not doing it to earn our place. We're not doing it so that we can pass the class. We've already passed. In fact, there's something we're supposed to be doing because we've passed. Just this past week, um, I I got to talk with Jennifer Hinton, who is a professor, uh, a recreation therapy professor at Western. And she told me the story that actually illustrates this perfectly. So she teaches um, a rec therapy class that um, one version of it is like the regular class, one version of it is the honors class. And at Western, in order for it to count as an honors class, you have to do a project at the end. So last year, she's teaching this class, this honors class, and, um, you know, COVID is happening. And the apple cart keeps turning over, and she has to keep rewriting the syllabus. And um, in the final iteration, she makes a mistake. She, she forgets to include the project. But the project, it's got to be done. Otherwise, it, it doesn't count for honors. So when she comes clean to her students, she says, okay, you know, like, we still have to do this project, but um, Essentially, there, there's, no, there's no points attached to it. I'm not really going to evaluate it. I, I didn't put it on there. That's not fair for you. So normally, there would be a certain number of points that you get for the project. Instead, just, just do the project. Do it in the best way that it seems to serve the clients that you're going to be working with. Now, you would think, since all the grading was taken away, you would think that maybe she would get subpar material uh, that year, like students just kind of phoning it in. But she said it was a really, a really a cool thing that actually the opposite ended up happening. So she, she told me, to my surprise, they were all relieved. That, that part's not really real surprising to me. They were all really excited to do the project and invested themselves just as much, or maybe more, when they knew that they just had to do well by the clients, but there was no pressure of my evaluation of their work hurting their grade. It was actually pretty beautiful. No one was grubbing for points. They were glad to work together and made good things happen for the joint experience. (laughs) I think this is a, a great example of the fact that that grace actually works. I mean, one of the negatives of my task-oriented personality is that there's a part of me that wants to do the work. Like, I want to do the work. I know that's a little sick and twisted, but like, I want to do the work. I want to feel like I did something, like I earned this, I made it. 
And if you just, you know, give it to them, give everyone a passing grade, then everyone's gonna slack off, right? But not Jennifer's students. Instead, it was like they were set free to experiment, they knew that they could take risks, they could just follow what they were passionate about, and they didn't have to be competitive with one another because they were all going to pass. This is the difference it makes when we understand and accept that Jesus has done the work for us, that we have all already passed. In essence, we are set free. We don't have to exhaust ourselves trying to earn a passing grade. Instead, we can just go for the extra credit, take on the bonus project, and do it with passion and excitement, and do it taking big risks for God. And what is that extra credit? Like, what's the project we're supposed to be working on? Sprinkled throughout the New Testament, we get glimpses of that, different ways to say it, but I love how Paul says it here in Galatians 6.2. Bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. In other words, if you've all already passed, then stop competing with one another. Don't exhaust yourself trying to earn your way in. Live your life in a way that bears the burdens of others and lifts up the whole group. In verse 5, Paul clarifies uh, the best way to do this. Carry your own load, he says. In other words, live your life in a way that you're loving God passionately and loving others in a self-sacrificial way And then let that shine. Let it shine for others to see. And so even those who are struggling with sin, even those who are tripping up and falling short, they can look to you as an example. Live your life in a way that bears everyone up. So as our students start a new school year, This can be a good time for us to make a new commitment for Christ. To claim, I I am a Christian, me. Not because anyone makes us, but because we choose to be. We are Christians. And we can say that we're Christians with confidence, not because we've done anything to earn it, but because by the grace of God, Jesus has done all the work for us. We've already passed. So let's go for it. Let's go big. Let's live lives that take big risks in order to love God like crazy and love one another like crazy, to live lives that bear one another's burdens. That will fulfill the law of Christ. Amen.
going to do another one. I need to apologize. When we did the prayers for the people, we were supposed to end in the Lord's Prayer. I also have a list from Jessica. So if you all now will join me with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The people we are praying for this morning, Haywood County, Geneva Robertson, Cindy Hudson, Ann Slagle Kaywood for a kidney, Susan Swan, Kara Overby for September Travels and Medical Treatment, Hannah Overby for Medical Treatment. And now if you will join me in the Apostles' Creed. Words are on the screen. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. On the third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I think we're gonna, so Mary, you actually have my piece of paper. What's, what's, our, <laughs> what's our closing song? Oh, I don't know. There was one up here. I don't know what our closing song is. Ooh, there it is. Thank you. <laughs> so our closing hymn today is number 700, Abide in Me. Let's stand and sing.
as we prepare to leave this place, just like when we come in, came in, um, there are practical and spiritual uh, preparations we can make to go out into the world. Uh, practically speaking, before you go, I hope you'll leave some kind of footprint for being here today, signing the attendance pad, leaving us a comment online. Um, it helps us to stay connected throughout all this. Also, um, as we go today, uh, right after the service, assu assuming it's not raining, um, uh, I'll hang out in the Jackson Street Courtyard and would love to be able to chat with y'all and get to catch up a little bit and hear how your weeks were. And if you're online, uh, this is a good moment to reach out to someone that you normally worship with, um, whether you just send a text or make a call, um, but maintain that connection with one another even as we're separated. Now, as we go into our weeks, the intent is that we continue in a spirit of worship. Uh, we keep doing what we did here with our whole lives. So to help you with that, on our website, silvafumc.org, you'll find um, daily scripture readings to go with uh, today's worship service and also discussion questions that you can use um, to journal or as a family over lunch. We also have two groups that meet after church. Um, uh, Bird Nicholson's class will be up in the second floor classroom above the Christian Life Center, but also um, Judy and Stan Benning's class has moved online to Zoom uh, as COVID numbers are higher. And so um, we're, we're, gonna, we're going to drop that link in the comments, and so you'll be able to find it there if you'd like to join with them. Um, I think 1130 is their ballpark for starting discussion, but you can log in there anytime. Also, this coming week, we have an opportunity to serve. Uh, Greening Up the Mountains is going to happen on Saturday, which is kind of a big deal around here. And uh, Gracie Wilson has a bit to, do you want to come share? You. <laughs> Um, yes, on Saturday from 8 to 12, 1-ish, just depending on the crowd, we're going to be uh, hosting a fundraiser in the parking lot, selling spots. Um, we, I would love for any youth to come out if they would like to help. Uh, we, everything that we raise will go towards funding uh, things that we can do for the rest of the year. Um, also, I would love help from anybody else who would like to come out on Saturday. You don't have to come at 8 a.m. just any time um, between 8 and 12 and 1, and we can set up shifts, things like that. Um, but yes. So if you'd like to help with it, just see Gracie, and um, we've got her email address in the bulletin, or you can reach out to the church office, and uh, uh, we'll get you connected with that. Thanks, Gracie. All right, as we go into the world this week, may you go in a spirit of grace, knowing that Jesus Christ has already done the work for you, and so you're free. Go big. Take risks. Live with passion. Live a life that bears one another's burdens. Amen.